Hey guys, so in today's video, I'm just going to be showcasing the alpha build for the AutoBleam 0.6 release. This is Steve from Nostalgia, and let's get started. Alright guys, so before we get started, I just want to give a big shout out to Screamer and the rest of the development team and support team who've been working on this mod and making it a really awesome option for anybody who's got a PlayStation Classic and wasn't happy with uh, what you ended up with from Sony. I want to preface this by saying that this build I'm going to be showing you guys is still in the alpha development stages. Myself and a few others were given the privilege of testing it out, but it is far from complete. There are still a lot of issues with it, uh, a lot of things are incomplete, a lot of buttons don't work, and it's still not functioning properly in the terms of being able to even get it out as a beta. As of right now, there's no projected release date, but as always, if this changes, I'll be sure to let you guys know, and uh, when those things do change, you guys can count on me to create a video to show you guys how to make those changes and how to do the updates. So with all that out of the way, let's take a look at this build. So the first thing that we're going to notice right away is that the menu and the theme is very different. Uh, you can see on there that they've got a new theme, they've got some new music playing in the background, but for the more more or less it looks, uh, it looks about the same in terms of the options along the bottom of the screen. You can see that your start button is still auto bleam, you've got scan, rescan, uh, the original PlayStation Classic OS or UI, uh, RetroArch, uh, the about options and then you've got select for options and an L1 for advanced. If we're going to go ahead and hover over to the L1 options, you can see you've got memory cards, game manager, and now there's something else called game UI. So this game UI feature that they have here is actually a new UI that they're working on to replace the auto bleam UI. It's called Evolution UI and it's really slick. So I'm going to be focusing the majority of uh, this showcase on this. Um, as you can see right now, you still have the option to go into Auto Bleam, but from my understanding, when 0.6 comes out and they're actually going to be releasing it, uh, this game UI feature won't be shown on the back end here. It will just simply replace the Auto Bleam start button. Before we leave here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly show you a couple other cool things that they've got. So when you press select and go to options, you've got your language configuration. And this is a really small additional support feature, but it is really awesome because the community is kind of pulled together. And what they've done is they've allowed for additional languages to be um, published. So this kind of extends the olive branch out to people who have a different native language. Uh, and now you've got things like Turkish in there, Spanish, you've got uh, Polish, you've got all of these different languages now available to you. So this this build specifically has really reached out to different different cultural groups and uh, different uh, different languages. So this is a, a very universal a universal build. So that's really awesome that they're doing that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take a look at the meat and potatoes of this build. Uh, we're going to hold the L1 button and we're going to enter into the game UI feature. Excellent. So here we are. Uh, there's going to be some things that you're going to notice right off the bat. One, clearly there's a new theme. But two, if I be quiet for a second, you're going to be able to hear some background music continuing to play from the original menu, uh, from the boot menu, into the actual uh, game display screen. So I'm just going to be quiet for a second so you can hear that. So for me, this is fantastic. I am a huge fan of having some sort of um, background music in a game selection screen. If you guys have watched my previous video on Raspberry Pis, uh, I worked really hard to try to find a, uh, a good background music uh, script that you could put in so you could customize whatever background music you want on the main screen instead of just having a static game selection screen. I really think it adds to the user experience and I'm super happy that they were able to implement this on this build. So uh, great work on that. Thank you guys very much for doing that. The next thing that you guys are going to notice right away is that the display looks very different. We no longer have the, the PlayStation Classic carousel where the games would kind of loop around in some sort of a weird circle. Uh, what they've done here is they've redesigned it and I'm actually really impressed that they were even able to do this because I didn't think at all that this was something that could be done. So they've um, they've redisplayed how the games are going to be laid out and it's going to be a lot more similar to what you guys would be familiar with the SNES Classic or with the NES Classic, how the games 
games are just very linear and they just kind of scroll from left to right. So that is, uh, that's kind of what they've done here and it's, it's absolutely fantastic. So I love this new look. I think it looks, I think it looks a lot better than the, uh, the previous one. The other thing that you guys are going to notice as well is that all the internal games from the original PlayStation Classic now display. So you can see we've got Cool Borders, we've got Battle Arena, we've got uh, Destruction Derby, Final Fantasy, Grand Theft Auto. All those games that were originally pre-built on the PlayStation Classic are now going to get pushed through into this new build. They do want to make sure everyone understands that uh, there is absolutely no data is changed on the internal memory of your PlayStation Classic. You don't have to worry about things getting saved there. Um, any possible corruption, any any sort of failed file transfers. And, and to further the security of that, what they've done is, um, for example, if you wanted to play one of the games that were pre-built on your PlayStation Classic through this UI, um, if you were to create a save state, it would not actually save the save state on the console. It would save all those save states right onto your USB drive. Now that comes with pros and cons. The pro is that you're not altering any data on your PlayStation Classic. Everything stays stock and you don't have to worry about that. The cons are that if you're building or you're playing a game on this build and you turn it off and then you wanna get back to it but you don't have your USB drive for whatever reason, you won't be able to have access to that save state. So keep that in mind that um, if you're gonna be playing a game and you're playing it through this UI, you're gonna to have to continue to play it through this UI if you wanna keep those save states active. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna jump into a game here so I can show you guys uh, some cool features that they've got going on. So we're gonna load up Metal Slug X. Okay guys, so I just wanted to jump cut into the actual game so you guys could see some of the changes that, were, uh, that I'm going to be talking about here. Uh, the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and access the hidden menu. So I'm gonna press select and triangle. And one of the big things that you're gonna notice here is that there is now this toggle filter option here that wasn't previously there. This filter essentially will smooth out some of the harder edges and pixels for some of the games, giving you a cleaner look. This is ideal for 2D games like Rayman, Castlevania, uh, Street Fighter, or Metal Slug like I'm playing right now. And what that's going to do is it's going to kind of make you have a much better, cleaner overall uh, display. So I'm gonna go ahead and toggle that on. There we go, so now we have it on. So you can kind of see if you take a look at the main character right here, I'm going to leave him in the same spot. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it off in one second. So let's try that. And there you go. You can see there's a major difference between um, the pixelation that the character has on his uh, on his body there. So again, I'm going to turn it on. And you can see it smooths it out. You don't see any of the hard edges anymore. Uh, it looks a lot smoother. It looks a lot nicer. So that is a really awesome feature. The next thing that I'm going to talk about really quickly is that this build that they've got for the PCSX emulator is a little bit more optimized and it's made specifically for auto bleam. So you're still going to have access to the hidden menu as you can see here, but you'll notice that games might run a little bit smoother. There'll be less lag. Um, there'll be shorter load times, whatever it happens to be. Um, you will notice that there is going to be improvements in terms of your gameplay. Now there's certainly still going to be some problems with some games and that's just with the emulator itself. So I've been getting messages from people saying, hey, can you get this to work? I keep having problems with this game or this game. Uh, it might just be the emulator itself uh, that can't run that uh, that game file. So uh, just keep that in mind. But so far it is running and looking really, really awesome. So yeah, now that we've got the game going, what I'm gonna do is, oh, I've got uh, the wrong thing on, there we go. So now that we've got the game running and we've uh, showed you guys some of the new filtering options there, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys something really cool with the save states, which is fantastic. So I'm gonna go ahead and load a save state. I'm gonna press the reset button on the PlayStation Classic. And what you're gonna end up doing is you're gonna see here that there are additional save states. So this one didn't load for some reason and I think that's part of the, uh, the build issue. But uh, for Metal Gear, if I click on the save state option, you're gonna see that there's actually four different slots for save states. So this is really cool. Um, and this is something that a lot of people were complaining about when the PlayStation Classic came out. They were saying like, come on Sony, you guys could have put in more than one save state. Nintendo did it uh, and all of these different things. So now what the developers have done is they've created four save state options for you for each game. So me personally, it doesn't really make that much of a difference. Uh, I'm the only person playing and I don't play games 
uh, in the sense of playing them over and trying different things. I'll play it through one time and if I'm happy with it, I just I move on to the next. If not, I just replay it. Uh, but I, I don't know that I'm ever going to use multiple save states, but there are a lot of people who do. If you've got a family with multiple players uh, and everyone kind of wants to have their own save state so that way they can play their own version, that that's going to work well for you. But uh, in, in my case, I don't have that. So uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it in terms of that, though. It's a it's a nice feature and a lot of people are going to appreciate it. But yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it on that. Uh, Thank you guys again for watching the video. Super awesome work from the development team. If you guys have any questions and you want to reach directly out to the developers, I'm going to leave a link to their Discord in the uh, description down below. Make sure that you guys check them out, join the Discord, let them know that you appreciate everything that they're doing because they're doing some fantastic work. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up, share the video if you think it was useful or it will be useful for anybody else. And I'll talk to you guys again real soon.